In this episode of Center for Tax Studies Individual Income Tax Course, we are going to discuss how you actually calculate your tax. This will also depend on whether or not you're the dependent of another. And so we'll talk about the kitty tax as well. Not kitty as in per, but instead we're going to talk about the kitty or child tax if you are claimed as the dependent of another. All right, let's get started. So the tax rate that we use in America is a progressive tax rate. What that means is that for each amount of income as designated by Congress that exceeds certain thresholds, you're going to be taxed at a higher rate. Our current rates are 10% to 39.6% depending on your income bracket. Now, these are actually a mid-range of what we have had to pay in the past. The lowest ever tax rates we've ever had were in 1914 when the tax rates were 1% to 7%. And they're not the highest. The highest ever tax rates that we've ever had were in 1944 through 1945, where the tra tax rates were 23% as the bottom rate, up to 94%. My grandfather used to joke that what you would do is you'd pay your tax to the feds, you'd then pay your tax to the state, then you'd tithe, and then you would have a negative balance in your checking account. But anyways, so how do you calculate the amount of tax that you actually have to pay? Well, there are two methods that you can use. The first is the tax table method. You are limited in using the tax table method if you make over $100,000. The tax tables just don't calculate tax beyond that. Also, you can't use these tables if you are an estate or a trust. As you can see here, what it does is it takes the amount of income that you have and it calculates the tax for you and provides you with a neat amount. You need to be aware of using the tax table method if you are making estimated tax payments. So if you are self-employed, you won't be able to determine your estimated tax amount for each quarter because these are produced toward the end of the year and they are very different each year. All right, the next method is that you can use the tax rate schedule. The tax rate schedule, as shown here, it depends on what your filing status is and it also depends on each bracket and you calculate your tax based on each bracket that you have. So to start off with, let's assume your client Chris is single and had taxable income of $102,000 in 2017. His tax is going to be $21,541.75. This is because you first calculate 10% of the bottom tier of the tax rates. So you calculate your tax after you have deducted your deductions and you've come to your taxable income, your taxable income, then anything that is up to $9,325 is taxed at 10%. So you have $932.50 of the first tax bracket. You then take anything in excess of $9,325 and up to $3,795 and multiply that by 15%. That is $4,200 and $93.75. You then go to the next bracket of $37,950 and up to $91,900 and multiply that by 25%. That gives you an amount of $13,487.50. Then from $91,000 $900 up to the amount of taxable income of $102,000. You then multiply that by 28% and that gives you $2,828. You then add all of those amounts from each of those brackets to give you $21,541.75. That's the amount of tax that Chris would owe for 2017. Okay, so there are some terms that are thrown around when talking about tax. These include statutory tax rate, your marginal tax rate, and your average tax rate. 
So your t statutory tax rate is the legally imposed rate. It's an income tax that could have multiple statutory rates for different income levels, where a sales tax may have a flat statutory rate. So we have a progressive statutory rate. Marginal rate, this is the percentage of tax applied to your income for each tax bracket in which you qualify. In essence, the marginal tax rate is the percentage taken from your next tax dollar of taxable income above a predefined income threshold. So for Chris, in our previous example, of $102,000, his marginal rate is 28%. Now the average tax rate is the overall percentage of tax you paid on the amount of income you made. So to calculate this, you divide the total amount of taxes you paid by your taxable income. So now let's talk about the kitty tax. This applies if a child is a dependent of parents or of another. And this is because it used to be that a child could claim his own exemption even if he was the dependent of another. And so what would happen is parents would shift unearned income to their children to be able to shelter income and not pay as much tax. So unearned income that is incurred by children under either 19 or under 24 who are full-time students are taxed at the parent's rate now. This applies if unearned income is greater than $2,100. So what is unearned income? This, these are amounts that you physically don't put your time into. So interest, dividends, capital gains, etc. Now, if your income is less than $2,100, it then is not taxed at the parent's rate, it instead is taxed at the child's tax rate. This is determined based off of unearned income's standard deduction of $1,050 and the greater of either $1,050, the amount of the additional child's tax rate, or the itemized deductions attributable to under an income. So if you have dividends that are being paid out to a child, but that dividend also has investment expenses associated with it, then you take the investment expenses instead of the $1,050 if those investment expenses exceed that $1,050. Now, if the net unearned income is positive, the amount is taxed at the parent's rate, but if it is negative or zero, the tax is computed without using the parent's rate. So there are two filing options for the kitty tax. The first is, you can file a separate tax return for the child. The tax on net unearned income is computed as though on the parent's return, and a form 8615 is used to compute the tax. Or the parents may elect to report the child's unearned income that exceeds $2,100. The parent can only do this if gross income is from interest and dividends only, the gross income is more than $1,050, but less than $10,500, and no estimated tax has been paid in the name and social security number of the child, and the child is not subject to back withholding. The parents must also pay an additional tax equal to the lesser of $100, or 10% of the child's gross income over $1,000. Here, Form 8814, entitled the parent's election to report child's interest and dividends must be filed. Other rules that are applicable to the kitty tax are that only the custodial parent may make this election. For married filing separately, the parent with greater taxable income is the one who must include the income. And if there is more than one child subject to the kitty tax, the tax for the children as a whole is allocated to the children based on their relative amounts of income. So let's go through an example. Husband and wife make $80,000 of taxable income and are in a 25% bracket. Their son is under 18 and makes $3,000 of interest income or unearned income and he has investment expenses of $700. He also makes $2,000 of earned income. So let's compute son's tax. So first, 
We take his gross unearned income of $3,000 and we reduce it by his kitty tax standard deduction as well as either the $1,050 that he is allowed or his investment expenses. Now his investment expenses of $700 are less than the $1,050 that he is allowed. So we take the $1,050 and his net income subject to the kitty tax is $900. So now we have to calculate the amount of tax that would be subject to him if it was included in his parents' income. So we take his parents' income of $80,000 and we add the $90,000 of income subject to the kitty tax, the total amount is then $80,900. So now the $80,900 is at a 25% tax rate. And so we take the $900 at 25%, which results in the tax at the kitty tax rate of $225. Had there been a split, and the $900 was in between two tax brackets, we would then calculate it according to those two tax brackets. So now we need to calculate how much tax he would then have to pay, which also includes his earned income. So now we take his unearned income of $3,000 and his earned income of $2,000, which equals a total income of $5,000. He then gets a standard deduction of $2,350. How do we calculate this? This is based off of the standard deduction calculation for dependents. So if he had unearned income, he gets $1,050. If he has earned income plus unearned income, then we take $350 plus his earned income which is 2,000, and that's his standard deduction, but it does not exceed the standard deduction that he would be allowed as he is filing single, which is $6,350 for 2017. He can take the 2,000 plus $350 as his standard deduction. He does not get a personal exemption because his, he is a dependent of another and someone else has stolen his personal exemption. And so his taxable income is $2,650. We remove the amount of the unearned income or $900 that we calculated earlier as it was subject to his parents' tax rate. And now the income subject to tax at the sum's rate is $1,750. We then apply the tax rates for single parties. And so since it is under $9,325, he is subject to the 10% bracket. We multiply the $1,750 by 10% and he has tax at his personal rate of $175. We add the income taxed at his parents rate of $225 And so his total tax is $400. All right, so that is how you calculate the kitty tax if you're a dependent of another. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this episode, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you have any questions about the material we discussed, feel free to leave a comment in the comment box below or you can email me at centerfortaxstudies at gmail.com. I love answering questions, so feel free. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.